This video is going to look at how you turn off the iPad. What's the best time to reboot it, reset it, let it sleep, back it up, uh, because it be, can be quite confusing. The simplest way to end a session with your iPad is simply let it go to sleep. So there is a, a sleep button on the uh, iPad. It's on the back of it near the camera. And you can change the time by going to settings and general and auto lock uh, how long the iPad will wait before it goes to sleep. So in this case, after five minutes of inactivity, it will just go to sleep. And you can change the setting from two minutes to never. Selecting never will mean that your iPad never turns itself off and it wastes a lot of battery. This it, it goes to sleep essentially because it can conserve battery power, but when you've finished using it, just let it go to sleep. After whatever minutes you've set, it'll just go to sleep. And that's the easiest way. So in this case, it's gone to sleep. And if I want to start again, I just press the sleep wake button and it's instantly on. It'll take you to the lock screen. And that picture there is a picture that you can decide what you're going to uh, put on there. Uh, slide to unlock and then you're back to where you were. It's instantaneous turn on, turn off. It's the, the best way to, to use it. Putting it to sleep does not use an awful lot of battery power, so it's quicker than turning it all the way off and then powering it back on. Uh, to change the picture in settings, you go into brightness and wallpaper. So if you wanted to change the lock screen, that's this one on the, the left. You can select something from uh, either your uh, albums or a camera roll or something from the wallpaper. And mine was just a picture that I took from the internet and put into my camera roll. Uh, now the next way to turn off your iPad is to power it off. So if uh, you really want to just to shut it down, like shutting down a computer that you have, a desktop computer, going to shut down, the way to do that is to hold the sleep wake button until you see slide to power off. And to do that, it's going to power the iPad completely off. Uh, and then when you want to turn it on, so let's just do that, slide to power, power off. So it's now off. When you turn it on again, you will, you'll see the Apple logo and it takes a minute or two to actually power itself back on and find the network settings, connect to the, to the Wi-Fi and, and find all the settings and things that it needs to actually work. So it can take you a lot longer to get going again if you do it this way than just to let it sleep. So that's, that's taken a couple of minutes just to do that. Uh, you, you might just power it off if you have uh, something that's not working too well, maybe turning it off might just free that up or you can't get out of an app, but it's, there are other ways to do that too. Simply put, if you're finished for the day or, the, or for, the, for the session, just let it go to sleep. If you want to shut down an app, if there's a, an app that's misbehaving, you can't get out of it or it crashes and nothing you do will fix it, then there's one way to try before you actually reboot the whole system. You need to open the multitasking bar and I can do that by two taps on the home button will open it or four finger swipe up if you have multitasking gestures turned on will open the multitasking bar. And across if I scroll from left to right are all the apps that are running in the background. And the iPad can take quite a lot of apps running in the background without really negatively affecting its performance. The last app that you used will appear on the left there. So the last thing I've done was in the settings and then before that I was in the browser and then Google search. If I wanted to delete something because yeah, the other day something was playing up, one of the apps I was using, Notability just wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. And I couldn't, every time I exited it and went back in, it was still in the same position. So the only way to fix it is close it down. So to, to close a running app down, just hold down an app, any, any, any of the apps, locate the app you want to kill, if you like, hit the red circle, and then that app is gone from the running background. There's, 
There's no need to go and kill them all and, and close them all from running memory. You don't need to do that. But it's useful if your iPad feels a bit sluggish or you have to close out of an app. It's the only way. And then tap anywhere to close the multitasking bar. To turn on multitasking gestures, if you haven't done that, it's in settings and general. And towards the bottom, multitasking gestures, turn on. Um, now, if uh, something is not right with your iPad, it's it's uh, more than sluggish and things aren't working and nothing seems to go right, then the other option, going down the list in order of priority, if you like, this is the, the third thing you might try, is to do a hard reset. And to do that, you hold the home button and the sleep-wake button continuously until you see the Apple logo. And as soon as I do that, this will, the uh, screen cap will, will disappear. When you see the Apple logo, you can let go of the, the um, home and sleep wake buttons. And that's going to completely shut the iPad down, uh, close all of the services and settings and, re and reset them back to the original state. Uh, when you turn it back on, you, you've still got all your data it hasn't deleted any data it hasn't deleted any settings it's just reset them all and the the final way to shut one down or to fix one so if a troubleshooting step is to erase the ipad and put it back to factory settings settings general there is a reset button and there is a race all content and settings so if i tap that uh, i have a a code that I've put in because I've set this up as a rest in the restrictions so that nobody can accidentally uh, erase my iPad. I've set it up in restrictions that uh, only I can do it. That's why it's asking me for a password here. And before it actually does erase the iPad, it gives me a, a, a final message. If I do say erase, then it's going to delete everything, all media and data all settings and it will be just like it was when I first bought it and unless I have a backup of all my contacts calendars bookmarks etc settings um, I wouldn't want to press erase first so I'm going to cancel that uh, this is a good way to do it if you were actually giving your iPad to somebody else also you're handing it down you bought yourself a new one and you're handing down this one to somebody else erase all the content and the settings and it will take all the data off, all your iTunes information, all your account information, and it's like it's brand new, and then you can hand it over. The other way to erase and reformat, if you like, your iPad is to connect it into iTunes, which I'm just going to do now, and have a look for in the iTunes 11. If you can't see the sidebar, then going into view, show, sidebar, mine will say hide because it's open. But there's the sidebar, so you can actually see your device and um, be on the summary. And to uh, restore it is this one here, restore the iPad. And that's going to also um, erase it. It's giving you the opportunity to back up first. And you'd say, yes, it's going to back up all your settings and photos and data, everything you need. So you would say that first. Um, It'd be foolish not to, to, to pick that one. I will cancel it though. And that's the other way to erase the iPad, get it back to factory settings. So you do that for two reasons. One, you're handing it off, or the other reason is that absolutely nothing is working and you've tried all the other ways and this is the final step. When you do erase it and you want to get the backup back, uh, again, by as soon as you um, connect it, you can restore the backup. And it's going to give me the last possible backup that I have, and then I can restore the data back.